All right, Rob here. This is my review of the Fantic Integra XF1 160. <laughs> just ride a lot of e-bikes and I tell you my thoughts and my opinion on how I find them. Yeah, this bike is so fun. The best way of finding out if a bike is for you is riding it, testing it and getting a feel for it. But this is my opinion of the Integra that I've been riding for couple of weeks now I've done probably I don't know a hundred ish miles so here it is I have done a walk around a first look at the bike so if you want to see it in a little bit more detail check that video out but I've been riding it for a few weeks now and um, I want to say that on paper it looks fantastic so it's got the 630 watt hour battery which is you don't get many bikes with that kind of capacity right now it's got the bros motor which is really good silent or near silent powerful really nicely integrated into it it looks fantastic the hydro forming on it looks brilliant I love the accents on it I love the color of it and just at a glance it looks like a really really solid bike it's got a single pivot at the rear just here 160 mil suspension at the front and the back and it's got a faux bar linkage so the progression is controlled through the uh, linkage into the shot so it comes out of the box with a 29er at the front and a 27.5 with a plus size uh, tire on the back this is a 2018 it came with a really weird tire choice that i think was very misspecced by Fantic. So, so Fantic, if you're watching, that was a poor choice of tyres, um, especially for the UK. This has got a different set of aftermarket tyres that the um, company that loaned it to me have popped on. They're actually pretty good. It's uh, They're called Hutchinson, never used them before. The front is a 2.6 and the rear is a 2.8, but it's got some really questionable components on it out of the box. The bars are too narrow, they're 760 on the large and even thinner, they're 740 on the medium and small. They're too narrow, put wider bars on. The dropper is only 120 mil, which is not enough. I'm six foot three, you can't get this bike any bigger. The reach is 465, I believe. So um, puts it in the range of a lot of other bikes, largest reaches, but it's not a long bike. The um, wheel choice, 30 mil diameter rims. The 2019 has got an even narrower front. Again, why? I, you, I don't know, it's really weird. A lot of people are having to buy this bike and change it because out of the box, the spec is just questionable. So if you're spending five grand on a bike, you should have it specced really well for its intended purpose. So this is an enduro bike having narrow bars and having an odd wheel and tire choice in 2019 is not good enough to be honest with you i'm used to a trail orientated bike um, and trail geometry now this has got quite a slack 65.5 head angle it's basically made for enduro this bike the weird thing with it is is it's so close to the 180 that they do it's almost not worth buying this bike and i i hate saying that but that is my honest thought because if you're going to buy this bike it excels at downhill and enduro style riding but if you're going to buy it for that get the 180 because the 180 is is out of the box much much better than this and it is going to suit its intended purpose way more than this riding this on the trails it it feels a bit cumbersome and a bit lazy and it just doesn't give you that lively feel that you get from some other trail bikes maybe that's because of the the rear suspension setup or 
the geometry or it just doesn't feel poppy and lively like um, a lot of other bikes I've ridden. However, as soon as you get it into a position that it excels at, it feels great. So downhill feels great, enduro stuff, it feels great. It felt so good. But if you're gonna buy a bike for that kind of stuff, get the 180. This is like an in-between bike. It's not quite agile and poppy and playful enough to be a great trail bike and it's not quite enough for uh, chunky downhill stuff so I would recommend the 180 if you want to buy it for enduro and downhill and it's not quite it just doesn't feel good enough for trail bikes compared to what you can get right now for five grand so on paper brilliant great motor great battery the stock forks work really well I did need to tune it quite a bit to get it to feel not so lazy when I took it to a bike park. I got some tips from an owner of the 180 in America. Thank you very much if you're watching. I set the sag at the rear to 20%. Uh, I popped the forks up a little bit, played around with the pressures. He recommended a short stem, different bars and different wheels and I just didn't have all that available. So it comes with a 50 mil stem. <sighs> I don't know, it's just an odd choice out of the box. So Fantic, if you're watching this, please look at the spec that you're releasing. If you're releasing a, an enduro bike, it needs to be bang up to date. It needs to have decent bars. It needs to have a, it just needs to be sorted. So it's not, you shouldn't have to spend five grand and do more work to get the bike that you want. If you're gonna buy a bike for enduro and downhill, get the 180. It doesn't feel lively enough for everyday trail riding out of the box. And that's a real shame because it could be. I think what Fantic should do is they should have the 180, the Integra 180 for proper chunky stuff, enduro, downhill, and a bit more gnarlier riding. And then they should have a separate 150 or 160 with a bit steeper geometry for trail riding just to create a real difference because they're too close together in the lineup. It's not quite a full on enduro bike and it's not a trail bike. So it sits at that kind of no man's land that, I don't know, that's why I feel difficult to recommend it. It is a good bike, don't get me wrong. It feels good to ride. If you own it, I'm sure you love it. And if you're thinking about buying it, you will get a good bike, but I would recommend looking at a different choice depending on what you're riding so i don't know i was frustrated by it, it there's a couple of things that um, i want to mention it did turn off and just die completely uh, and that was really annoying because i was in the middle of a day in the middle of some downhill stuff and it just died halfway down and i just couldn't get it started again and it it took 24 hours for the bike to turn on i checked everything like everything that you would check, all the wiring I took apart, and it just decided that it's not gonna work, and then the next day, it worked. Um, I don't know, it, it frustrates me, because it's got so much potential, but it's just not quite there, and this segment of the market is getting so competitive, and in 2019, it's going to explode e-bikes i'm telling you there's so much cool stuff going to happen and i couldn't gel with this bike you know when you get on it and you just think that i don't know i just couldn't make it work for me however riding it downhill and enduro at the bike park it felt good it felt good i really started to like it and then it stopped working so to summarize great motor great battery questionable overall spec to be honest with you you're going to need to change some bits out if you want to get the most out of it so i had a lot of fun on the bike the bike park it was really really good felt really planted really stable and uh, i couldn't help feeling yeah, that I if i was cool. riding the integra 180 that the experience would have been even better so if you are going to look at the integra range definitely give the 180 a try because i'm pretty certain it's going to smash up the bike parks and feel so so good I just felt that the 160 was not quite enough travel for full on enduro and downhill. And uh, it was not quite as nimble as I'd like for the trail, but I'd love to test the 180. If you do like this stuff, 
um, subscribe and all that stuff. I do try and be as honest and open as possible and bring you all of my thoughts about these bikes that I'm riding. So I will catch up with you all soon. Cheers for watching. Bye.